you hear me now? Okay. Um, so um, last week we had the opportunity to pray with a young lady who came in here who um, is um, leading me here by myself instead of standing next to me <laughs> and helping me talk about it. Lots of room right here. But what was happening is um, um, she came uh, last week and we invited her back to hang out with us with the teenagers, but she wanted to be with the big people out here um, and not with the teenagers in the back. So that was okay. And then after church, you know, I was over here and um, we, we had to get home, but God told me to go talk to her. So I went and we played a little game and the game was God's going to tell me some stuff about you and you're telling me if I'm right or wrong. And then after we were done, she was like, okay, you're right. I give up. And then we talked about how her name, Emmanuel, that cute girl back there with the McDonald's cup, because she's awesome. So she got that McDonald's cup right there. We don't want to embarrass her or anything, but everybody look at her with the McDonald's cup. She's awesome. <laughs> and and we, we all need to look at her and clap for her because last week she became a sister in Christ, just like us. So she came into the family. And I told her we're all weird, so it's okay. You'll fit right in. Um, but she just has a really awesome kind of warrior personality. And I was just talking about how God has given her power in her words and her ability to communicate with people. And you know how sometimes we can have words that can cut people down, but those same people have the ability to really build people up. And that's just what I saw in her, and that's why she's awesome. And plus, her name is Emmanuel, which means God with me. Pretty so cool. she was pretty much stuck. She was going to have to find Jesus eventually. So welcome to the family, Miss Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Amen. Is that all right? Did, go ahead. Go ahead. Nancy, come on. Um, gosh, I got to be careful when I say Nancy because like five people come running up. Is that all right? Did we embarrass you? No, it's all right, isn't it? Amen. We love you. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Just to add to that. To add to that, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I'm a member of Communion, sure. Frank, Frank's Bible study, and one of the members of our group who doesn't come regularly to this church, her name is Nancy Johnson, um, I, I, okay, I had, um, she was complaining, oh, well, she was just complaining of, of pain in her, um, be, because she had a short leg, and when she said that, we were uh, leaving the, the, the Bible study, and I said, well, let me pray for you, so I put my hands on her, and I prayed for her, and I think she said, I don't remember exactly if she said she felt warmth or not, but she said the next time, she, next week that she came in very nonchalantly said, uh, my leg's not, my leg's normal length now, and I don't have to stretch like my leg is longer. Hallelujah. And I'm like, wow. And then that night, both Beth Bumbeyer and I uh, prayed over her because she was complaining of her other hip. She had pain in it. We both prayed over her, and again, as I'm so excited just talking about this. Um, she said she felt heat and warmth in her leg, and the pain went. The pain was gone. She got healed of two things. Hallelujah. And that's the first time I've ever seen God use me during, you know, for praying for someone is the absolute result. Because I've been praying, Lord, let me see your glory. And yes. let me see yes. it. So praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, everybody, you know, everybody needs to see yourself doing that. You know, we talked about it um, the last several weeks. We talked about how. Your, your mind, you begin to imagine things. How I many you know every one of us can imagine stuff? You know, some of you sitting here right now, you're imagining food. You're imagining what you're going to eat. You know, when you, when you leave here today, you're imagining how long the service might be. So maybe you can get out of here a little quicker so you get to the restaurant before the other people do from the Baptist church. So, uh, but we all have an imagination, right? And we need to develop that imagination on the things of God, not just the things of this world. You ever watch a, a, a movie or something like that, and uh, it gets into your imagination? I remember when I was a, a young boy, uh, we went to see this movie called House on the Haunted Hill. I don't know if you ever remember that. It was black and white, so you couldn't see blood or anything like that, but I mean to tell you, it was scary. And, uh, and when, I, when I came home that night and I went to bed, uh, I, I didn't sleep. You know, I, you know, you don't, don't let your arm hang over the bed, you know. I mean, you just, you, I, you know, I was scared. I mean, to tell you, it was almost to the point that I had to go tell my mommy that I needed help because I kept imagining things, you know, sounds. And, you know, and I lived in the city, and we didn't have air conditioning, so the windows were open all the time, and we had an alley behind us. And the cats would fight out there, you know. And I was like, oh my God, you know, oh my God. So 
fact, last night my wife, she comes out of the house and we, we, we heard something outside the window. And, uh, and, and, you know, Rachel, Nancy's cat, um, <laughs> hangs out there. And uh, when she wants to come in, she goes by the window because she knows I sit by that window and makes some noise. You know, you know all that kind of stuff. And uh, so anyway, I heard, I heard noise out there like the cat was trying to tell us something. And, and so, you know, like the man of faith I am, I sent my wife out to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what the, what the deal was. Because, you know, we just hear the <laughs> all this stuff going on out there. And uh, I, I think she had a robe on at that point. I, I don't know. Yeah, so, so anyway, she goes outside. And I'm just sitting there, you know. I'm reading, you know. And I uh, go outside and she, she starts to call the cat. And uh, starts walking towards where the sound was coming from. And next thing you know, I hear this. Because ah! <laughs> it wasn't our, our cat, Nancy's cat. Uh, it was other cats, you know, two other cats that were there. And when they saw her coming, they jumped out, you know, and took off. But, you know, you can imagine all kinds of things. There are people, you know, they don't want to take the trash out at night because you're just imagining something's around the corner. Somebody's, you know, maybe, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, you watch movies and stuff like that, uh, or you just sit there and think, or you read stories, and you see the news, and, and, and imagine that. You can imagine all kinds of evil things happening, especially in, in the world today, when we have such access to everything bad is going on everywhere, anytime, all the time, you know. But you can use that same imagination to see yourself. Not as the one who's always in need. Thank God for God helps us when we're in need. But to see yourself as the one bringing the answer to the need that the world has. Amen. That the people around you have. You see yourself as an instrument of God. You see yourself as the light of the world. You see yourself as, as the embodiment of Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory, going out into the world, not, not the one that just, you know, was always wanting or receiving, but the one who has something to give. You remember what, what Peter and John, when they came to the, uh, the gate there, uh, the gate beautiful it's called, and uh, there was a man there that had been crippled from birth, and, uh, and, and they turned to him, and, you know, he was begging for money, and, and, and they turned to him, and Peter said, I left my checkbook home, but what I have I give to you, in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. And, and the man gets up and starts dancing around, totally healed. Well, how can Peter, I know he was the first pope, but how can, it's interesting, I was, reading, I was reading the other day where in Galatians where Paul was talking about Peter and, and calling him a hypocrite, you know, because he was, he was uh, 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 you know, eating with the Gentiles until the, 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 uh, the, the religious Jews came along and then he stopped eating with them and, and Paul called him a hypocrite and it's written, you know, for eternity in the Bible that Paul called Peter a hypocrite, the first, first pope. I don't know about that infallibility all the time, but anyway, where was I going with that? Anyway, so, so Peter says, here, you know, Peter, a fisherman, you know, not, not seminary trained or cemetery trained. I mean, just Peter... Uh, 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 just a fisherman, just a fisherman, just a regular person, just like you and me. That's why God chose uh, the 12 that he chose, because we can identify with one of them. Amen? Some of you may be the tax collector. Some may say, I wish I was the tax collector instead of the tax payer. Amen? <laughs> but anyway... But you can identify. Maybe it's Downing Thomas, you know, uh, 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 somebody that, that uh, yeah, I want to believe, but I'm not sure. You know, let, me, let me really check things out. Uh, uh, maybe you're Peter, you know, just mouthy all the time. I didn't mean to look at you, Abby, but <laughs> you're too quiet, actually, all the time. But, you know, maybe, maybe you got, you know, you, you put your foot in your mouth a lot like Peter did. I don't know, but you can identify. With, but they were all regular, normal, quote, people. Just like me and you. But Peter said, I got something. I got something in me. I got something on me that I can give to you. Are you listening? And every one of us has something in us and on us to give. But you've got to imagine that's you. And 
how do you imagine correctly by the word of God? When you see that the Lord has anointed you, when, when he says that greater is he that is in you, when he says lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, you begin to take that and imagine I'm the one doing that. I'm the, I see myself like Peter. I see myself like Paul. I see myself like Jesus. Do we just sing that song? I want to be more like you. You know, is that just some religious song that we sing? Just something sounds good, you know? Something for the band to play so we can feel good? No, it's reality that we're to be like him. As he is, uh, John says, as he is, so are we in this world. Amen? So we want to pray for a, a few people. We have people that are watching from... Uh, uh, Florida, hello Florida, people watching from Lancaster, hello Lancaster, and uh, did, did you find out where, Mary, did you find out if, if, if she's watching, Leanne's watching, and, um, and, and she's got some, uh, something that, that uh, attacks her body or what have you, but uh, we want to pray for uh, not only those that are watching, but uh, anybody that you may know or anybody that's in here right now, we want to pray right now for God to touch uh, and to heal and deliver and set free. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Uh, we just stretch your hands out. Just, just first, stretch your hand toward the camera right back there. Would you do that? That's it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we send a corporate anointing for healing right now, Lord, to those that are watching. We say receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. We rebuke sickness, disease, cancer, diabetes, uh, paralysis of every kind. We rebuke uh, 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 brain situations or problems, uh, tiredness. Uh, uh, we rebuke uh, uh, bowel disorders in the name of Jesus, kidney disorders in Jesus' name. We thank you that cancer is cursed at the root. So, Lord, anyone that's listening right now and anyone that uh, we're touching right now in our prayers, we pray for absolute healing, wholeness, and deliverance right now in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 And, and, and last thing I want you to do, uh, I want you to pray uh, over uh, these uh, uh, cards here. Uh, the, I, I share with you that uh, the um, Chester County uh, Fire Chiefs Association uh, appointed me as um, uh, chaplain for the... Uh, Fire Chiefs Association, which represents uh, several thousand uh, firefighters and, and uh, emergency personnel across Chester County. And, uh, uh, you know, I've been the chaplain for the Westchester Department here for a number of years now. Uh, but uh, my, my role has expanded. Amen. And uh, so, uh, you know, they gave me, they made these up special and gave them to me. And, and so we're going to be able to uh, handwrite a message to any any firefighter or, or uh, officer that is injured or, or you know sick uh, in some way and uh, encourage them in the Lord and bless them and help them and pray for them and so on and so forth. So I want you to pray your anointing over these uh, as they go out, that the anointing of God is going to touch uh, the lives of these uh, 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 emergency workers, okay? Set your hands out again. Would you, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you right now that you will do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. We release, as Paul uh, released an anointing in, in the claws that, that, uh, that he had uh, that healed and, 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 and sent demons out of people. Uh, we thank you that there's an anointing right now. Lord, as these cards go forth, Lord, the anointing will touch their lives and the words will pierce their hearts. And many will be saved and touched and healed and delivered in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. 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 All right, now I got to share this. We sang this song this morning uh, that the guys, the band, you know, um, played. And the first song, I, 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 not the first song, but uh, a song, new song that, that they had learned. Can you put the words to that real quick? Can you do that? That new song that they did, I, I forgot the name of What's the name of it, Jerry? Make you happy. Oh, don't you just like that? Make you happy. You know, hey, don't you want to be happy? Huh? Come on. Now, some of you, you look, look at that. You, you shut off because you, you think, 
No, the Bible doesn't talk about happy. It talks about joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength, and happiness has to do with the circumstance. Well, that's true, but, you know, for the sake of uh, us just getting along, uh, can you believe that that joy uh, has to do with being happy? Is, is that all right? Okay, so it says, you make me love you, make me see you, make me jump. You make me scream. You make me, you should have put whistle. You make me, when I first read it, I thought it said fail. I, I thought, but I thought, that can't be right. But you make me fall here at your feet in total abandon. You make me laugh. Some of you, you haven't laughed in so long that your laughter is rusted. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I mean, you know, listen. If, if we want people to see the light, if we want people to see Jesus, how many know the Bible says that Jesus had fullness of joy? Yeah. You know, we always look at him. You see these pictures, uh, you know, at, I, I remember, you know, in the old Methodist church that we were in, uh, there was this picture of Jesus and uh, had this little lamb. You know, the, the lamb looked like he was malnourished and Jesus looked like he ain't had a good meal in months. And he just kind of like got this drawn, you know, kind of face, you know. <laughs> Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I know I'm touching some of the tradition, but anyway. But he looks like he's just anorexic, you know. Mm -hmm. And he looks like, you know, uh, uh, and, and we, 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 we really hit on, you know, he was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. <laughs> but it says for the joy that was set before him. It says that he had gladness more than all of his brothers and sisters and angels and everybody else. He was a joyful guy. So, you know, when people see you and you walk out of church or, you know, your life group or whatever it is, when, when, when people see you, what do they see? Do they see? I've been to church. Yeah, I tell you what, and I thought we were getting out, Margaret, I thought we were getting out, you know, when he made that last point, I thought we were getting out, but here we are, look what time it is, the buffet line is long, we can't get into the buffet before all these people, and it's all because our preacher took so long getting us out of that church. I ain't going back to church, take too long to church. What do you, what do you look like to people, what do, what do people see when, when, they, when they see you, do they see, you know, look like you've been sucking on lemons or something? I mean, you know, it's just, yeah, we had to, had to put up with church again. <laughs> hey, man. But listen, I want to show you a picture. You got that, that little video there? I want to show you a picture of, uh, this, is, this, is what, this is what Christians should look like. This is, this is what Christians should be. Eat another chip. <laughs> I hope he didn't wake himself up. He's sleeping over there. But uh, <laughs> joy, you make me happy. And now, you know what was making him so happy? You know what was causing that joy that's in him to, to bubble up? See, you know, Jesus said, come as a little child. Right? Come as a little child. You see, we get all our stuff going on up here, man, and it's like, you know, we need a reboot or something, man. It's just all mixed up and messed up and worried and thoughts of this and thoughts of that. And, you know, we worry about what we're looking like and feeling like and all this kind of stuff. See, but, but kids, you know, and this kid, this kid's amazing because, you know, uh, even when he don't feel good, he still laughs. Boy, if we could just adopt that mentality. Come on. 
you know, we don't feel good to say, no, you know, I guess I'm just, I'm working on it, you know, I'm, I'm trying to feel better, I'm trying to have a good attitude, but, you know, I, I don't feel good, and I, I hurt, and, and so I got an excuse. Yeah, your excuse is unbelief. Unbelief. Oh, there he is here. Wait, he's here. Wait. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Say hi to all them people out there. Say hi to all them people out there. Yahoo! <laughs> this is your destiny. This is your destiny. Yes, it is. Well, you looking at them over there, huh? Now, listen. Guess, guess what he was laughing at? What? Guess what he was laughing at? He was, he was looking at the face of his father. And his father, all he was doing was eating some chips. And every time, every time he would eat a chip, he thought it was funny. <laughs> you know, let go of my lip there with that. And I tell you what, this kid just laughs all the time. You know, I mean, laugh all the time. You don't have to hardly do anything. I mean, he, he's not quite awake yet, but as soon as he wakes up, I mean, he will laugh like this. <laughs> he's liking this. Isn't he? He's liking this. This is, his name is Simeon. Simeon, Simeon means I, I hear God. Isn't that awesome? Emmanuel means God is with us. Awesome. Simeon means I hear God. And I see God's face in daddy's face when he's even just eating a chip. Right? Right? Am I right? Am I right about it? Am I right about it? Am I right about it? Am I right, huh? Say, Lord. You know, <laughs> when we talk about when we talk about purpose, you know, we talk about destiny. You don't mind if I just talk to you a little bit there, do you? But you know, there's, there's been a lot of teaching about destiny and finding your purpose and laying out a plan and and do you have a five-year plan a 10-year plan you know do you have everything you know all your ducks in order on all the things that you're going to accomplish and do for the lord or in your life but you know our number one purpose is to know him is to see his face because when you see his face, you see, he fulfills your destiny in the purpose of seeing him. Let me say that again. He fulfills your destiny in the purpose of seeing him. Because when you see him, you begin to realize who you are. And when you begin to realize who you are, then you go ahead and do what you're called to do. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. But you see, if it's all just up here, if it's all just my plans and, and what I can figure out and what you know somebody else told me about and, and this looks like a good idea and I think I'll try that and I'll try this and, and, and you know, it's, it's good and I'm talented in this area and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move in that area. But you can totally miss the will of God and the destiny of God. <laughs> when it's just you making your plans. You know, the, the scripture says in Proverbs that a man makes his plans, but it is the Lord. It is the Lord that decides which way. Amen? How do we, how do we find that? See, you, you, you can't find it when you are caught up in disappointments in life. You can't find it when you set some goals and, and the goals just didn't quite come to pass. You know, I was going to do this, I was going to do that. Here, you better take them off. Because they're looking more at him than they are at me. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. Where's my Avery at? She's back there. That's another story. But anyway, I love these great grandkids. They're just awesome. Man, I want more of them. More of them. More of them. Just <laughs> set your hands over there and one over there. Say increase, multiplication, in Jesus' name. Man, don't rob the world of the, the blessing of these kids that, that you know, are going to bless the world. Amen. Amen. But we, we, we can make our plans and we can decide and set our goals. And, and, and then when things don't happen the way that we, we think they ought to happen, uh, we're not joyful anymore. We're not, you know, we can come, you, you listen, they can come in, they can do all kinds of songs about, you know, he makes me happy and happy and happy. And we're sitting there like, yeah, I wish. <laughs> Why? Because you lost sight of his face. The Bible says that there is joy in the presence of the Lord. See, if we're not joyful, listen, I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching, you know, if I'm pointing the finger at you, guess what? I got three of them pointing back at me. I'm talking about all of us because we're all humanoids, and most of us. And, and we all, you know, live this life. You know, it's like a, a quote I, I, I mentioned on Facebook, uh, I think it was last night, that says, life sometimes is full of pain. But misery is a choice. Amen? Life, you know, we've all suffered pain of, of, of some kind, some shape, some form. We, we've all been through stuff. Come on, somebody. We've all had, you know, disappointments. And we've had people that we thought we could trust. And, and, and then, you know, something happened and you can't even figure it out. You know, what, what in the world? What did I do? What, how come they act like? Why are they like that and leave and do and whatever and hurt and stab and talk about and derail and how come I you know that job I was leaving that job was for me and it just didn't work out and how come you know and this and and we lose sight because we get so moved by the things that we have experienced see and here's what happens here's what happens listen to me listen to me really good because what happens is, the Bible says that we are to, 2 Corinthians 10 5, it says that we are to cast down vain imaginations. Vain imaginations. And it says to take them into captivity to the obedience of Christ, to the word, to his anointing, right? Every thought, take captive. Don't allow vain imaginations to stay in your mind because they will build strongholds. Amen. How many know when you, when you speak of a stronghold, it is, it is something that is a, a fortress, something that is difficult to penetrate, difficult to tear down, difficult to attack, uh, difficult to deal with when there is a stronghold. And what happens is when we allow these vain imaginations, these thoughts of defeat, these thoughts of disappointment, these thoughts of pain, these thoughts of misery to build a stronghold, listen, what happens is that everything that happens in your life after that stronghold is built has to come through that stronghold and it becomes, it's, it's almost the opposite of filtering something positively. It filters it negatively. I don't know if you're hearing what I'm saying. See, when somebody has been, you remember the, the man that was uh, at the uh, pool and, and, and he was paralyzed and he'd been there for 38 years and, 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 and the angel would come down and stir the water up and people would jump in. They would be instantly healed. I don't know all, all about that and what, you know, what that meant, and, but it says it in the Bible. So it's true. People got healed if they got in the water when it was stirred up. Well, here's this man, you know, laying there for 38 years, and Jesus comes along and he says, you want to be well? You see, he had developed a stronghold now. See, because year after year after year, he lay there year after year after year, lay there year after year after year, 
and, and somebody else would get healed and, and he wouldn't. And then next year, somebody else would get healed and he wouldn't. And he laid there some more and, and, and the sores would develop uh, on his side that he laid on. And, and he laid there some more and disappointment and discouragement. And so when Jesus says, you want to be well, he says, I don't have anybody to help me. There was a stronghold that, that had been built in his mind, those vain imaginations that say, you ain't never going to get it. You ain't got no help. Nobody coming to help you. You ain't never going to get in that water in time. You ain't never going to get here. You're going to be like this the rest of your life. And some of, some of you right here, some of you listen to my voice, you have these strongholds because of disappointment, because of things that have happened in your life. It's begun to build a stronghold in your mind. And so anything that comes, even when it's a positive thing, you know, it's like somebody says, hey, the, the sun just came out. Yeah, but it's been cloudy all day. Hey, you just got a raise. Yeah, but the government took most of it. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It, it becomes a stronghold so that even the good things that happen are not good anymore because they're never good enough. When we allow those vain imaginations, and the way that we allow those vain imaginations is we take our eyes off of him. How do you, how do you see Jesus? Now, you can imagine in your, in your mind, you know, imagine Jesus. And, and, and that's where, you know, things like the, the Bible, you know, miniseries and, and, and the Passion of Christ, you know, different, you know, depictions, illustrations uh, are good because they can give you a, an actual picture, you know, of what, what, you know, he may look like and, 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 and what he may act like. And that, that's a good thing because you, you get your imagination uh, in operation. You, you understand what I'm saying? But how, how else can we see Jesus? Uh, simply in this Bible. See, it's an illustrated Bible. You know, now the kids have, you know, illustrated. In other words, they got pictures in them. And, and some of you, you know, maybe you haven't arrived to the point where it ain't got no pictures. I ain't reading it. <laughs> I like cartoons so I can actually see, you know, what happened. But no. This is illustrated. Any story. You, you ever read a story? I, I, I bet I could you know, interview anybody here. And, and you have read a story, and it was like you were there. <laughs> Come on, you know what I'm saying? You've read a story uh, about something or somewhere or, you know, and, and again, the movies and things like that. I mean, you can watch a movie and then, you know, at night think about, you know, I'm dreaming. I'm in outer space right now. I'm, I'm going to beam me up, Scotty, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, you can imagine all kinds of things like that just from watching a story or reading a story. And yet, what is it that hinders us from realizing that if we read these stories, uh, it is an illustration of, of who God is and who Jesus is, and, and, and we begin to see him for who he really is. We, we, we look in his face. You know, it's an amazing scripture in, in Hebrews chapter 4. Uh, just go over there real quick, would you? Hebrews chapter 4, and uh, starting with verse 12. Uh, Y'all still breathing out there? Okay, good. And um, I'm, I'm almost finished. Um, and so you can imagine eating soon. Hallelujah. <laughs> now you ain't laughing. You want to be really spiritual. Now you ain't laughing. Okay. Hebrews chapter 4, but listen what it says here. Hebrews uh, chapter 4, it's talking about uh, the, the Word of God, it, and, and, and it says, um, verse 11, he's talking about, you know, how the Israelites, they weren't too obedient to the Word that they had received. But it says, let us therefore be diligent to enter the rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the Word of God is living, it's, it's alive. You know, that, that word there in the Greek is uh, is, is uh, the quick, you know, in other words, you know, your, your fingernails here where this area right here is called the quick. You know, have you ever stabbed that area there? I mean, you, you find out if you're alive or dead. You see, if somebody, if somebody was passed out on the ground and you just kind of poke that area there, you find out if they're really alive or not. But it's alive. In other words, it is something that is pulsating with life. The, the, the word is. And it says, the word of God is sharper uh, it's living, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing 
even to the division of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. You know, there has to be a separation of soul and spirit. See, your soul, your mind, uh, your thoughts, your emotions will tell you all kinds of things that you can imagine or meditate on. But the Word of God separates... Am I going too fast? The Word of God separates what is of the mind, the soul, and what is of the spirit, life. Are you listening to me? So without the Word, listen, without the Word, you're in trouble. You're not going to make it very well. Your life will not be, you know, as he said to Joshua and on and on and on. He said, you know, hearken to the Word. Keep it in front of you. Keep it before you. If you want to prosper, if you want to walk in health and life, then you got to keep this word because there's life in the word. Anything other than that is not life. Are you listening to me? So, you know, if you, if you decide, look, I'm, a, I'm just going to be a, a, a Sunday morning Christian, that's all. I, I'm going to come in, I'll listen, you know. I, I never bring my Bible because, uh, you know, I don't feel like looking through those scriptures. You know, and, and, if, and if you think that this is all that you're going to feed off of and, and have victory in your life, you are sadly mistaken. I just hated to say that, but it's true anyway. If you don't take time to put this word into your life, that's why we have life groups, so so that we can feed off of the word of God and fellowship and prayer and miracles happen. Lives are transformed because minds are renewed. The greatest tragedy in the church is a mind that's not renewed. Because the potential and power of God resides when Jesus comes into your life. The very power, life of God is on the inside of you. But until it registers up here, you will live a defeated life where the enemy will have his say-so in your life because you don't know the reality of his word. Well, amen anyway. That's good preaching, Pastor. That's good stuff. Anyway, let me finish here. So he says this. The word is a discernment of thoughts and heart. Now listen to verse 13. And there is no creature, no living thing that is hidden from whose sight? I thought we were talking about the word. Why does it say his in capital letters? see that? John put it this way. He said the word was with God. The word was God. And in verse 14, John chapter 1, and the word became flesh and tabernacled among us or lived among us. What is the word? It's not a what. It's not an it. It's a he. Are, Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So when you're looking in, if you want to look into the face, you know, if you want to be like that little boy over there that can look into the face of his father, that's not, you know, just, he, you know, he's not uh, 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 sitting there quoting scriptures to him. That's a good thing. Don't, don't get me wrong. But he's not quoting scriptures to him. He's not trying to make him laugh in, in the sense of telling him jokes or making all kinds of funny faces. He's just eating some chips. Like he does pretty often, just sits around eating chips. <laughs> we just call them chips and grits. That's what we call them, chips and grits. And and uh, and uh, call, were they conch chips? Is that what they were? Conch chips. So he's from the Bahamas, so you know he eats a lot of weird stuff. I don't know, but but what was he doing? He was just eating a chip. <laughs> and the kid laughs. Why? It's not the chip. It wasn't what he was doing and what he was saying. It was his face that he saw. Are you hearing me? In his presence, his fullness of joy. 
when we're looking into the Word. See, we can't see Jesus. In fact, he, and Jesus even put it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He said, you know, we, we, we are not to know anyone according to the flesh any longer. In other words, uh, don't try to see. See, that's why we get messed up with pictures. We get messed up, you know, especially in pictures from days gone by, you know, where, where it portrayed Jesus as, as you know, not a, a real man. That's what I loved about the, the, the Passion of the Christ, you know, that Jim Caviezel was Jesus in there. And, uh, uh, you know, had his shirt off and actually had some muscles. You're like, oh, my God, Jesus is naked, oh, my God. But he, he looked like a real man, let's put it that way, which he was. But he says, we're not to know anyone according to the flesh. In other words, look beyond the natural and begin to look in the spirit. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporary and subject to change. But the things that are not seen, this eternal thing that we see cannot be changed, cannot be erased, cannot be uh, 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 in any way deterred. Uh, my word goes forth and it shall accomplish what I set it out to do. So when we look at this eternal word, we're looking in the face of Jesus, the word. Are you with me? And you can't help, you can't help, just like Simeon, you cannot help look in the face of Jesus and not get happy. See, Jesus is in me, right? And, and, and you know, some of you look at me and you get a little happy. Because he's in me. See, you think, you know, it's just my, my wit and humor and my great revolutionary teaching. But listen, all of that is okay. But it's what's in me really that matters. And it's how much of I've seen him that now is reflected in me and reflects from me that makes a difference. See, you can, you, you can, you can, you know, the, the word has an anointing on it. Don't, don't get me wrong. There's, there's power in the word just like we said. But the word has to become flesh. This word has to become embodied in you so that when people look at you, they say, wow, who's that? I don't know, have you ever noticed this? You know, but you, listen, you need to notice it, and you need to have this thought in your mind. When you go into a place and somebody looks at you, you begin to realize why they're looking at me. And not go, it must be what I'm wearing. Must, they must really like this jacket. must be the way these pants fit. I tell you what, it must be the way I am dressed and, and uh, you know, that little way that I did my hair today, obviously they are, see, and that's where pride comes in and all that kind of stuff, but if you, be, you begin to, oh man, if you begin to realize because he is in you, that when somebody looks at you, I don't care how good looking you are, and some of you are good looking, some of you are pretty Oh, you were good. Like, yeah, right. That's what I was going to say. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. See, that wasn't Jesus speaking. That was, that was me. <laughs> but you got, you got to begin to think. You know, when that, when that beggar at that gate looked at Peter and John, it says he looked at them. Now, if you just read that like that, it's just like, okay, he looked at him. Like, you know, he looked at him. No. But if you look at the the, the, the uh, Greek definition of that word, it literally means that he looked, but then he looked a second time. And he saw something different. What, what made him see? It, it wasn't just the words that Peter said. It was what he saw in them. Peter said, what, what, such as I have, I give unto you. This man saw something in Peter that caused him to say, amen, brother. And took his hand and began to walk where he had never walked before. Why? Because what was in him was transferred out of him. And a miracle took place. Many 
need to see is God. When you go somewhere and people look at you, just don't go, yes. <laughs> you know, don't stop in the bathroom, look in the mirror and go, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> I look good today, yeah. <laughs> but you need to begin to imagine and realize that because he's in you, his word is in you, that people are looking at you because they see something that they hadn't seen before. And they look a second time and realize, what? who is that? Who is that? I, I've had people do this, you know. I, I've had people run up to me in a parking lot and say, are you, are, are, are you? And they think I'm some, you know, guy on television, some, you know, this, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I remember going to a, a Kenneth Copeland uh, convention and uh, I, I look a little bit like Jesse Duplantis. And, and, uh, and, and so I had people follow me to the bathroom. You know, which is kind of embarrassing, you know, when people are following you. You don't know what they want to know about you, you know. <laughs> anyway, does he wash his hands? Yeah. But they were following me because I look like somebody. You, you understand what I'm saying? You look like somebody. See, if, if you've been looking in his face, uh, the Bible says we behold his Glory, as Moses beheld his glory, and he glowed on the outside to the point where they had to put a veil over him because he was burning people up with the glow that was on him. And it says, so do we, as we look at him, uh, that, that we begin to glow with his glory. And, and when people see the glory, it's not just the words that you speak, but it's what they see on you and coming out of you that causes them to say, I, I, I want some of that. I need, and they don't even know sometimes what it is that they need or what they're looking for. But they see you. And when they see you, they see Jesus. And they see you laughing like a baby. I don't mean necessarily, you know, everybody walk up. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have what was called the, what time is it anyway? I didn't, I didn't bring a watch today. <laughs> anyway, it, it would have said I got another hour anyway, so it just doesn't matter. What time is it? It's 20 after. Okay, we got we got to finish up. But uh, what did I start to say? <laughs> what? Are, See, listen, see, listen, see that? Yeah, I, I, I don't mean, you know, we, we had, uh, that's what I started to say, we, we had what was called the, the, the laughter movement. <laughs> yeah. we, had, we had the laughter movement. You know, and a lot, a lot of people criticize the laughter movement because it seems so dumb, you know. So, I mean, you know, I mean, Rodney Howard Brown you know, was, was a big part of that, and, and he'd be preaching somewhere, and, and he's pretty, you know, you know, South African guy and, and, you know, pretty, you know, intense. And people would be sitting there and falling off their chair laughing, and all he's doing is, is teaching or preaching from the scriptures, and people, <laughs> and they're falling all over the place. And boy, I tell you what, the Pharisees came out of the closet to point a finger and say, that's not of God. Shouldn't be laughing in church. Boy, if you grew up Catholic, Episcopal, Lutheran, whatever, man, you know, the churches you were in, you know, shut up, shut up. You know, I mean, we grew up Catholic, you know, and, and there's six kids in my family, and they all lined up, you know, in the, in the pew, and... Uh, and I tell you, when you got five boys, you realize why they call it a pew. But anyway, they, they, you know, we're all lined up there, and 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 the way that mom and dad would 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 control you is is pinches, you know, little pinches, like yeah, okay, because what you had to be quiet. You don't want to wake God up. <laughs> you know, he's he's a little hard of hearing, but don't make too much noise. And when people started laughing in church, it's like, oh, my God, this is awful. This is, 
obscene. People laughing. What were they doing? They found themselves in the presence of the Lord, where there's fullness of joy, life forevermore. And all of their troubles just didn't matter anymore because they laughed their troubles away in the presence of the Lord. Are you listening? And I'll tell you what, I've been there. I've been on the floor before. Let me tell you what. And, and it, listen, it's wonderful and it hurts at the same time. I have laughed so hard. I, I remember one time when we were at the firehouse and, and holding the service there. Uh, I laughed so hard on, on a tiled floor uh, that uh, my face was turning blood red. And my daughter over there, Laura, uh, she came over and said, Dad, stop, stop, stop. Because she thought my head was going to blow up or something, you know. Thought I was going to explode because I couldn't stop laughing. Just couldn't stop laughing. And it's like you think, stop, stop. You know, your jaws are starting to lock up. And you're, ah, you're just laughing, laughing, laughing. Your stomach is hurting. And, but you know what? When you're laughing like that, you know what? You remember the last time you had a good, good belly laugh? Anybody? Anybody? I don't know. Back in 1949, I, <laughs> something struck me really funny. I was watching Ed Sullivan, I think, and it was a really big show. And... Uh, I, I just laughed, I laughed, I laughed, almost laughed to die. Some of us need to laugh to die. And I mean die to your old stinking self and be alive to the joy of the Lord. <laughs> Listen, I, I want to assure you, your face will not break. Some of you are worried about cracks. I know. You're worried about, you know, will this be a permanent wrinkle? Oh, my God. You know, I think we're going to look like the Joker, you know. It's permanent. Oh, I can't get rid of it. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? You know, if, if all the people around, wherever your neighborhood is and your job, that all they saw all the time is a face of joy. Every time they saw you, they saw joy. And, you know, either they're going to get with it or they're going to get away from you. but they will not forget you. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. I said the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you don't have strength, it's because you don't have joy. That's pretty simple, isn't it? You know, easy equation there. If you don't have strength, you don't have joy. Listen, God wants you free. God wants you to be full of joy, full of life. Because you cannot affect this world with just quoting scripture to them. You can't affect this world with your doctrine. Because they got another argument. But you can affect them with something that is absolutely beyond reach, beyond touch, beyond uh, in the sense that they can't put a finger on it. Uh, it is something so real. It is so absolutely uh, uh, magnifying and, and, and so uh, amazing that... They, they cannot ignore it. They cannot argue with it. That's the joy of the Lord. That's the joy of the Lord. Put my video back on, Sandy, if you would. Let me see him one more time. Come on. Come on, Simeon. Do your thing. Now, did you hear? Did you hear his daddy laughing? Now, now Simeon's got a good laugh. I tell you what, he's he's fun. To, you know, sometimes it's it's as much fun hearing him laugh as it is to hear baby laugh. And listen, I'm going to tell you something. That's the same thing that Father God does. When you start laughing, he starts laughing with you. <laughs> 
He said, look, they're, they're, getting it, they're getting it. They're full of joy. They're happy. I love when my kids are happy. I want to laugh with you. Just like it says, he dances over us. When we dance, he dances with us. Amen? When you're joyful, he's joyful with you. You have a pity party, guess what? The devil and all his demons will come without invitation. But if you have a joy party, the devil ain't going to be nowhere near you. He don't want nothing to do with you because your praise declares who you're trusting. Amen? Sing this song and we'll let you go, all right? Sing it like you mean it. Something. Turn me around. I want to make you happy. Make oh, you happy. Inside out. I want to make you happy. Make you happy. You make me love. You make me sing. You make me jump. You make me scream. You make me fall. Here at your feet.
joy of the Lord be your strength. Look into his face this week. Just laugh. Find yourself someplace if you're worried about people hearing you. Find yourself someplace and just laugh. And let him laugh with you. Listen, listen real good because he'll laugh with you. Amen. Father, bless your people, Lord. Thank you for an anointing of joy. Lord, even this week, greater than we've ever experienced before, we we'll find ourselves in a restaurant, find ourselves at home, find ourselves doing the laundry, find ourselves driving to work in uncontrollable laughter. We have to pull over the side of the road because we, we can't see for the tears of laughter. I declare it in Jesus' name. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Don't forget the men's breakfast this Saturday. We got a great guest speaker.